Hey Pfingsters and welcome to this video where I want to show you the python sum method to sum up some values in a list. So given uh, the following list of uh, some values like values from 1 to 6 inclusive. Now uh, how do you sum up over all these values? And of course you can write a simple for loop and uh, and collect the current sum in a, in a, in a sum variable or so. But Actually, there's a much more efficient, effective way, time effective way, and also I think uh, runtime efficient way, and that is the um, sum function in Python. So you can, so for example, to sum up over all values in the list, you simply call sum, and then you pass the iterable into the sum function. And the sum function is built in, so you can uh, use it without importing any external library. You can simply type in sum you see it's uh, it's marked as a built-in function as a keyword so uh, the python editor already recognizes it as a special function and uh, yeah it's already defined you can use it out of the box on top of any iterable so it doesn't even have to be a list so if you execute this you see that the result is 21 so if you sum over all these values you will see that the result will be 21 but then there's a there's a little known secret <laughs> uh, because many many coders actually don't know don't know this even if they are advanced coders and that, that is to pass uh, an initial value a start value to the sum function so for example if you want to um, sum over all values in the list but use as initial value 10 instead of 0 so you want to start with the sum 10 and then you can sum it up this is this this may be relevant for in many applications where you um, have pre-computed a sum of, of some other list for example and then you want to use this pre-computation and sum up over um, and just add the values in your iterable to this pre-computed value and if you do this you see the result is now 31 so it is 10 10 more okay so we have we start with 10 and then we simply add all elements in the list to to the initial sum of 10 and uh, so these are already the two arguments you can use um, you can of course you can also pass like tuples for example so if you have a tuple say four tuple values and on, uh, only of only uh, value one then it just sums over all tuple values it also works with sets so indicated here by this um, uh, special parenthesis parenthesis uh, and if you execute this you see it also works okay because why is the sum one because a set can have only one element okay so even if you throw in four times the element one then it will just uh, result in the set with one element that is one okay so therefore um, I mean be careful you cannot have duplicate elements in the set but in general you can throw in any iterable into the sum function and it's uh, very uh, efficient a common error that is uh, um, received by uh, from by people who uh, try out the sum function is they try to sum over all values in a list of string elements okay so if you if you do try this one and you print the result this m may make sense because you you know I mean if you calculate the plus operation on two strings then it will just use it uh, concatenate both strings okay so the plus operator is defined on strings so therefore it m may make sense to some people to just sum over all values in the list and then expect to have the concatenation of those uh, string values but if you actually execute this you get an error and the error message is it's a type error so here you see a uh, type error unsupported operand types for plus you have an integer and a string and um so why is that? Because um, as I already said, there's a second value. It is implicitly already given. It's implicitly defined to zero. And this is the initial, the start value. And initially it is like per default, it's just assumed that zero is the start value. And then it tries to add the um, different list elements to this start value. And then you may ask, okay, what if we use the empty string as a start value so that we concatenate the empty string with all the strings in the list? This may, may sound logical to you but then you get another type error you see it's not unsupported operand types anymore but now now you don't have to, you don't try to to sum an integer with a string so therefore it's a, it throws an, another error um, and the error is some can't sum strings okay it just tells you i mean uh, in my opinion it is not necessary they could have implemented this uh, simply and there's no no problem with it but they have implemented the join method and they propose that you, you should simply use a join method if you want to do this. How does the join method work? The join, me join method is a string method so you can on any string you can call join 
And then you can pass an iterable like our list and the join method simply then joins together all um, string elements in a given list, okay? And it uses the string on which you call the join method as a delimiter between those, okay? So this is separator string, so to say. You can also have like an empty space, for example, or even a, um, um, yeah, so here, for example, now you see we have all uh, the three strings, Bob, Alice, N, and as a separator, we have the empty space, but then you also can have the like empty string, the empty string, then you will just concatenate them as expected, okay? So this is what you, basically how you, you can sum over a list of, of strings, if you want to do this. Another uh, frequent question is the time complexity of the, um, of the sum operation. And of course the time complex complexity is linear in the number of elements of your list. So if you have a list with n elements, time complexity is uh, proportional to n operations, okay? Because, why? Because you have to, you, you like if you really implement it yourself, one, two, three, four, five. So say we have a list. Now, if you you would you would like start with a with a value of a zero, for example, and then you would go over all elements in the list and simply add those element to the sum, and then you print the sum. So this is more or less how the um, how the sum operation is implemented. And now you see 15. So the result this is the correct sum of all values in the list. So this is more or less how it is implemented, and you see. Uh, so how many operations are there? We go over all elements in the list. So we touch every single element in the list exactly once and we add it to, this, to the sum. Okay, so therefore we have like for n elements, we have n um, plus operations to, to compute. So therefore uh, runtime complexity is linear in the number of elements and there's not, nothing faster basically. So if you don't have any cache or any pre-processing steps, then it's, this is just how it is. I mean, to sum n values, time complexity is n. <laughs> It's, it's linear uh, to the number of elements. Um, good. So this was already like um, most. I want to I wanted to show you. Um, there's one special trick with for the advanced coder. Let's let's uh, explore this special trick. So say you have a list of tuples. I think I think studying this trick will just make you a better coder, so we will go for it. Okay, so say we have a list of tuples here, and we want to sum over the first tuple values and over the second tuple value, so that our result should be, like our goal result should be a tuple, uh, which is like 1 plus 2 plus 0, so this is 3 in the first tuple value, and 1 plus 0 plus, plus 3 is 4. So this should be our result. Why? Yeah, because we just add the first tuple value and the second tuple value. How do we do this? So a very nice one-liner uh, solution I found is uh, to use a zip function. So we simply call zip function. The zip function zips together two iterables or multi multiple iterables and it zips the first, it just adds the first value of each iterable. It just um, like uh, um, um, just pushes them together, or aggregates them together. So maybe I'll, I'll show you an example quickly because it's easier to understand with example. So say you have uh, the zip function on like two lists, one, two, so one, two and three, four. And say we have an, even another list, five, six. So we have three lists and we zip them together. This means that we create a new, um, yeah, and, and we convert it to a list. So th this means that we have like the we add together the uh, we group together the first elements of the tuples in one list. So like we have the list one three five as one list uh, output, and then the second list output would be two four six, and we simply add we simply create a new list out of this. So the result is a list of two uh, tuples, and yeah, you see here we have uh, grouped the first tuple values one three five and the second tuple values two four six together and this is what we want to do here yeah we want to group together the first tuple values and then we're going to group together the second tuple values and uh, then we can easily sum this okay so first we create a, a variable zipped and we um, unpack the list into this uh, very into this uh, function zip what does it mean unpacking the unpacking part just gets rid of the outer um, parent square bracket basically yeah so it gets rid of the list of the outer list because as input we want to have three tuples this should be our input we don't want to have one list as input to the zip function Be why because we want to for each tuple we want to 
group the first elements, okay? The first element with the other uh, first elements of the other tuples. So therefore, our tuples should be uh, so we uh, should be the input to the zip function, and this is achieved with the asterisk operation that just yeah gets rid of the outer um, square bracket here of the list basically. And now if you print the zipped variable, then you can already see what I'm up to. We print it, and now we have. So this was our input, like one one two zero and zero three, and now our output is one two zero and one zero three. Okay, so we have the first. We have grouped the first elements in one tuple, and we have grouped the second elements in another in another tuple. And now we simply have to sum both. Yeah, we have to sum, sum this tuple, these tuple values, and we have to sum these tuple values. And by summing them, we obtain the um, sum, uh, basically the sum for both uh, for the first tuple values and the sum of the uh, second tuple values. So if we do this, you see um, we can create a tuple result. Let's call it tuple, tuple res, or just call it re result for uh, res for result. And we create a new tuple. We take from the zipped output, we take the first one, the first tuple. Remember, it's just uh, all values, um, all first tuple values uh, grouped together, which is one, two, zero. They group together, and we calculate the sum over those. And this is our first output tuple value, and the second one is simply the sum over the second. Um, zipped values, okay, and this is our result. So if you print the result now, we get we obtain the um, zipped the um, the first tuple value summed and the second tuple value summed. Okay, so we sum tuple tuples element wise in a Python list. Okay, so this is a beautiful line of code. You see, basically we we have I mean we have two print functions, but basically you can have a single line of code easily. This line does most of the work, and here with this line we can have a, a very simple one-liner solution that solves a problem if you know the zip function. And uh, of course, this is uh, like very important for any Python developer to know the built-in functions at least. And uh, yeah, if you don't understand the zip function, then play around with it. So stop the video now, or after the video finished, uh, just take the zip function and play with it and try to get an intuition this is i mean this is i i can have i can i can create a video that is like 30 minutes of, of, uh, about the zip function and maybe i will even do this but it's much more valuable if you just take 10 minutes of your time instead of 30 minutes watch, watching passively and learning the zip function actively just going over the function trying different try with try it with different values and with different inputs and get a and you get an intuition about um how it works Okay, so if you want to apply your your uh, theory now a bit, so because there's nothing there's nothing like practice. I mean, you need to practice your skills. You need to develop your own projects, and uh, to be to become successful in coding, you need to get out there and solve real problems for real people. Yeah, I mean, this is this is critical for your success as a developer. Otherwise, you will just get frustrated and you will lose motivation over time. But if you solve problems for real people, then you will become very motivated and you will stay in the game. And just staying in the, in the game is the most important thing as a coder. Why? Because then if you stay in the game for long enough, your skills will explode. You will have, you will sit on this exponential curve of improvement. Your, your, your knowledge will just ag aggregate and more and more pieces of knowledge will interact with the, with the old pieces of knowledge you have already acquired. And knowledge is just cumulative. It's a cumulative function. So if you stay in the game, you will learn more and more and more and become even, uh, become much more better, much better, faster. So you need to practice. You need to do practical projects to stay motivated and stay in the game. And if you are interested in this, then check out my free uh, Python freelancer webinar, for which I have uh, added a link in the video description below. And uh, yeah, check out the webinar. I will give you a step-by-step -step approach how you can become a, um, a highly profitable coder. So you so you earn like six figures as a Python freelancer, and by doing this, you of course learn the skills. So even if you are a beginner, you can already provide value to the marketplace. You can already solve problems for clients, and by doing so, you can improve your skills. So this is like the best best uh, way to learn. Um, to become a Python freelancer, to become a practical developer and um, solve real problems for real clients. Okay, thanks for listening to this video and see you in the next video. Bye.